Hello friends, this is Neha. Welcome to AK Academy. In the last lecture, we have discussed about the basics of coordination chemistry and here in this lecture, we are going to discuss about CFT, that is Crystal Field Theory. Uh, to access the entire courses, please visit akacademy.in. Uh, let us discuss the, let's start with the CFT, that is Crystal Field Theory. The need of Crystal Field Theory lies in the shortcomings of VBT. VBT is a theory that explains bonding uh, which is able to like it is very useful in explaining the bonding in coordination complexes but the theory does not talk about nature of ligand electronic spectra then why some of the complexes are high spin and some of the complexes are low spin the theory also does not talk about the effect of temperature and the magnetic properties it also does not tell the stability of coordination co complexes and all these um, shortcomings are actually removed by CFT now what does the CFT say it says that the ionic ligands like OH minus, CN minus uh, act like a negative point charges and also the neutral ligands like ammonia, water, they act like a point dipoles where the negative end of, the, of these dipoles are directed towards the metal cation. The other point says about or talks about the bonding between the metal cation and the ligand. The theory says that the bonding between metal cation and the ligand is purely ionic. It is not at all covalent. There is no overlapping of orbital taking place. In case of free metal ion, there are uh, the, the 5D orbital that is dxy, dyz, dxz, dx square minus y square, dz square, all of them are degenerate. But whenever uh, a complex formation takes place, the degeneracy is completely destroyed due to the electric field of the incoming ligands. Those D orbitals which are lying in the same direction as that of the approach of ligands will be will have will experience more repulsion and and that's the reason that the potential energy of those d orbitals will, will get increased in comparison with the other d orbitals so this was about the assumptions of crystal field theory now before going ahead with it let us see the shapes of d orbitals actually the, the there are five d orbitals that is dxy dyz dxz dx square minus y square dz square in case of dxy if you see the lobes of d orbitals are lying in between the axes and same is for dyz here also the lobes of d orbitals are lying in between the axes and here also the same that the lobes of d orbitals are lying in between the axes but for the other two that is dx square minus y square and dz square the lobes of d orbitals are lying on the axis now keeping these points in mind let us see the crystal field splitting in case of octahedral complexes for octahedral complexes, the metal cation lies at the center of octahedron, and the six ligand, uh, the, and the six ligands are, are like they are they are they are at the six corners of the octahedron. Now it could be seen that the, that the uh, that the three axes that is x, y, and z axes are directed along the ligands, or in other words, I can say that the ligands are going to approach in the direction of that is in along the x y and z axis the ligands are going to approach in case of octahedral complexes the ligand approaches along x y and z axis this is a very important point why means uh, keep this point in mind now as i had previously talked that whenever a ligand is approaching the metal cation there are two kinds of interaction taking place that is the uh, that is basically the attractive interaction and the repulsive interaction this point is a very important point now the thing is that the two electrostatic interaction taking place that is the attract attractive interaction is taking place between the metal cation and the negatively charged ligands so and then uh, the repulsive kind of interaction means whenever a ligand negatively charged ligand approaches the metal cation the repulsive interactions are there between the lone pair present on the ligand and the um, and the d electrons of the metal then a small amount of uh, small extent of repulsion that is taking place between the nuclei of the metal cation and the nuclei of the ligand then also there, ca there can be repulsion among the ligands themselves because all of them are negative charged so the thing is that these are the two kinds of kinds of interaction which always take place higher the attractive interactions taking place between the central metal cation and the uh, incoming ligand more closer they will get and more closer they are getting more will be the repulsion between the d electron of the metal cation and the electrons of the ligand so more the repulsion more will be the increase in the potential energy of the d electron the thing is that in case of free metal ion the as i said the d orbitals are completely degenerate if suppose if we consider that the d that the all the six ligands are approaching the metal cation in a spherically symmetric way which means uh, 
that all the ligands are at equal distance from each d orbitals but actually this is a hypothetical condition it is not possible that all the d orbitals are going to get affected uh, to the same extent if this would have happened then uh, all the five d orbitals will uh, will uh, raise their energy to the same extent but they will be still degenerate but this is not the case actually the two d orbital that is d x square minus y square and d z square orbital as i said they their lobes are lying on the axis and we know the we know uh, that in case of octahedral complexes the ligands are also approaching along the x and y axis so the thing is that these two d orbitals are going to experience, experience more amount of repulsion and hence they will have more increase in the potential energy in comparison with the other three uh, d orbitals that is d uh, x y d y z and d z x orbitals this is a very important point and that's why it can be seen that for the set of these two orbital that is dx square minus y square and dz square the energy is increase and for the set of other three orbital the energy is decrease so these uh, set of doubly degenerate orbitals is is called as eg and the set of triply degenerate orbitals uh, that is dx y d y z and dz uh, d uh, x z they are called as um, t2g which are triply degenerate actually but the thing is that overall energy of this berry center Uh, the average energy it should remain constant it must remain constant so the thing is that uh, for the for these two eg orbital the energy should increase by 0.6 delta o and for these three t2 orbitals the t2g orbital the energy should decrease or the system should stabilize by 0.4 delta o where the separation gap or the separation between the T eg and the t2g is denoted by a parameter called delta o it is denoted by the parameter delta o where o stands for octahedral or it can be also be given by 10 dq um so yeah so this was about what this was about the crystal field splitting Uh, in octahedral complexes now we'll discuss the crystal uh, field splitting in case of tetrahedral complexes for tetrahedral complexes keep in mind we should we have to imagine a cube and the metal iron is lying at the center of the cube the ligands are lying alternate on the alternate corners of the cube it can be seen the the red color thing that i have shown are the ligands and they are lying at the alternate corners but look at the x y and z axis if you see the ligands are lying in between x y and z axis now this is a completely opposite scenario that we had seen in case of in comparison with we had what we had seen in case of octahedral complexes and this is and so the thing is that um, those d orbital that is d x y d y z and d uh, x z orbitals which are lying in between the axis and the ligands are now approaching in case of tetrahedral complexes the ligands are also approaching um, from in between the axis they are going to experience more amount of repulsion and now in this case their energy will get increased um in comparison with the dx square minus y square and dz square orbital so the scenario over here will be completely opposite these three their energy is going to increase and for as i said the average energy of berry center it must remains constant so for uh, for triply degenerate orbitals we will denote them by t2 and for and these doubly degenerate orbital will denoted by e but not eg or t2g because the tetrahedral complexes they lack uh, inversion center so the thing is that yeah so um, so for t2 they will be lying 0.4 delta t above berry center and uh, the e orbitals the, the doubly degenerate e orbitals they will be lying 0.6 delta t below the berry center as i said this particular diagram is very very important when we are calculating the crystal field splitting energy about which we will be talking in the next video and uh, so in the next video we will be talking about the factors affecting this parameter delta o which is actually the uh, energy between the the two set of orbitals uh, that is actually delta o, which are the factors which affect them and then i'll be also talking about the C A C F S C. How to calculate the C F S C in the previous question based on it? If you would have liked this video, 
like comment and share and please subscribe the channel and uh, uh, don't forget to press the bell icon thank you